welcome to How to Paint a Blood Axe's Orc Knob. Here's your paint list. Sand yellow is used for the camo areas, as well as any of the areas that I want to be lighter later. Mud brown is then used to block in the first pattern of the camo. Bone white is then used for the second part of the pattern and you want this to touch the mud brown color. Now we're going to open up the Colonial Violet Dry Pigment and the trick here is to place the pigment where you want your shadows and then use another brush to kind of feather it out. The cool thing about dry pigments is that when you feather it out there's no way you can leave brush strokes. So you got to be careful though because it can still be wiped off until you varnish it to fix it in place. I'm happy where all the pigment is, so time to take some matte varnish and seal it all in. I'm happy with the camo areas for now and all those light areas that we just painted, so I'm going to go ahead and protect them because I kind of want to airbrush the skin. So. We'll use Silly Putty for that and mush it into place using a sculpting tool or the end of a paintbrush like I'm doing here.
for the base coat on the skin, I use Cayman Green. So I made this mix of Cayman Green and Turquoise mixed one to one, and I thought it was going to be lighter than the base coat, and it turned out to be slightly darker. Once I realized this, I decided to spray it kind of in random spots, just to create a variation in the base color. Now I use camo green to highlight the skin. Then I used a mixture of Cayman Green and Ice Blue, kind of playing with hot and cool colors as far as greens go. And I admit this color was a bit bright, which we'll fix in the next step. So since the saturation got killed in that last highlight, we're going to use camouflage green, thinned about 10 parts water to one part paint, and go lightly over all those highlight areas to kind of pull the light colored back down to the first highlight. Time to base coat all the silver areas, and for that, we will use the color gun. Okay, I was probably a little bit insane for doing this. Wanted to try something different for the silver areas to kind of muddy up the metal. And I didn't want to do our usual smoky ink, which we're probably... Actually, yeah, we, we end up doing that in this video. But you can tell the difference by doing this step here using Imperial Blue, Gory Red, beastie brown and ice blue so we're using a dark blue a red a brown and a cool kind of white color and just kind of splotching kind of messy colors and layering them up over each other gave the metal a very different appearance when we were done you'll see it in the end and I kind of like it instead of just being silver with a wash it, it looks a little bit more interesting.
I was right. Now we apply smoky ink to all the metallic areas. So I tried to use black pigment to shade the metals, but the pigment was acting weird. It just was not adhering to the paint, and it usually does pretty well. Maybe I should have matte coated it, but instead I decided to grab some ivory black oil paint and try it this way. Show you that you can kind of do the same thing. The only problem with oils is you do risk leaving brush strokes, so you basically just place the shadow where you want, kind of overlap into the area that you don't want it, and then use a different brush to kind of blend it down. Now we will use rust to base coat his shirt. and heavy khaki was used on some of the leather straps that he had. It's weird when you're using like mostly a brown based palette, trying to pick different colors of brown to differentiate the different materials. It's kind of challenging, but fun. And now we use bone white to highlight the leather straps and some other areas that I thought the color would work good on.
we're about to do edge highlighting. So try to use the side of the brush rather than the tip. It's much easier. And now we edge highlight using white, just like my latest videos. I just find that white reflects back the strongest. So it looks really good in video. It looks good in pictures. It looks great in person. And I mean, you could work it up. You could use a light gray and then save white just for the hot spots for a highlight but i don't know it's been working and it looks i don't know it kind of gives a comic book look especially after we do the black lining and i don't know maybe my style is starting to lean towards that but i like the result personally And now I will use bright bronze to paint the bullet casings that are attached to the little ammo pouches. And now I will black line the details using black. Now you can skip this step. I just, I like the way it looks and having precise control over where the black line is. But I don't know, sometimes the washes are hit or miss. Sometimes they get into all the details, sometimes they don't. And this makes sure that all the areas I want a definite black line I make sure they're there. We're still gonna wash after this, but if this is a, a bit time consuming for you, you can just skip and go to a wash. So we're gonna apply a wash, but before we do that, we use gloss varnish to help the wash get its capillary action, and all that stuff, get into the details and line it the easiest way possible. And the gloss varnish has the least amount of surface tension of all the varnishes. So that's why we use it. So now we're gonna mix some Payne's Gray watercolor. And this is an option. Like you guys see me use oil washes and stuff. Watercolor will work just fine. And it's also there for as an option for you guys that might have kids or pets that could get into it. So you can use watercolor. That's pretty much why I used it for this step, just to show you a different way to get to, from point A to point B. Now to clean up the wash, we just dip some Q-tips in water. So once the watercolor looks good where it is, put your favorite matte varnish over the whole model, mount it on your base, and you're good to go.
Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.